Hey guys, welcome back to week six of the Automotive Weekly Waveform. I can't believe it's already been six weeks. Um, it seems like we just started this. But for this week's waveform, we only need a single channel. Um, so any scope will pretty much work. Today I'm gonna try and use the U scope. Um, I still haven't got much practice with it, but we'll give it a good bash and, and see what happens as long as the battery's still full. I hope I shut it off last time. Yeah, it seems like it powered up. Today we are going to be working with Hall Effect sensors. Now this is a very common sensor for, typically a rotational sensor, um, cam sensor, crank sensor on certain vehicles. Now not every vehicle has a Hall Effect sensor for the cam sensor or the crank sensor. Um, so you Subaru guys, I know we have a lot of Subaru captures in the group because they're easy to test. I don't think Subaru started using a Hall Effect sensor um, until they went with the timing chain motor in 2011 or 12. Um, all the other ones are probably gonna be a two wire sensor and we'll be covering that at a later date. So typically three wires will have a power of some sort, whether that's 12 volt or five volt, we'll have a ground um, normally referenced and it's grounded inside the computer. And then we have a signal wire, which is going to fluctuate between typically zero and five volts, or if we have a 12 volt power supply, zero and 12 volts. And that toggle is normally equivalent to our power supply. And what happens is there's some electronics in the sensor itself, but as um, a metal tooth goes by that sensor, it changes the magnetic field inside and that magnetic field or the chip analyzes that and either pulls that voltage down to zero or lifts it up to five volts. So what we're looking for is just a five volt square wave, 12 volt square wave. Now I have a 2008 Toyota Highlander. I believe on this one, the crank sensor is not a Hall Effect sensor. So I'm gonna be focusing on the camshaft position sensors. Um, I chose this vehicle because there's one right up on top. It's very easy to get to. Um, so this one, hopefully a vehicle that comes in the shop this week is going to be easy to snag a cam sensor waveform. Let's go ahead and look at the wiring diagram so we're um, aware of which wire we're targeting although we could just have the vehicle running and back probe each wire since it's really easy to get to and find which one we have um, a signal on. But if you have an issue with a sensor or you had to have a code for like cam, cam position sensor, um, no signal or signal out of range, then that's when you'd only need the single channel to go in there and make sure that cam sensor is putting out a signal. And if it's not, then you can analyze it from there. If it is putting out a signal and you're still getting that code, then the computer may be interpreting that information incorrectly, um, or you have a sync issue between your camshaft and your crankshaft. This vehicle is a 2008 Toyota Highlander. It's not a hybrid. We got the 3.5 liter four wheel drive. And We'll just type in cam sensor up here. We'll just jump down to the diagrams. Engine control, control diagrams. We'll open this up. Should give us all side by side. And we are looking for a camshaft position sensor. And I'm not sure if it's gonna be highlighted for us or not. I might just be looking blind here. Okay, they don't call it a camshaft position sensor on this one. They call it a VVT sensor because they're using it to monitor the VVT position or what the position of the camshaft is when they activate the variable valve timing. So it actually says that we have four VVT sensors on this engine, one on each camshaft. Um, I know that there's one that's really super easy to get to, and it looks like it's bank to, unless Toyota changed their firing order, um, intake camshaft. So bank to intake, I should have a yellow, a blue, and a pink wire. Okay, so it looks like we have a yellow, blue, and pink, um, but some of the other ones are yellow, blue, and red. So I think that's a pink wire and not a red wire. But either way, we should be able to, to figure it out. And then our information is kind of strange here. Um, probably Toyota terminology. It says VVL plus and minus and VC. But if you notice all of these yellow wires are tied together and they 
both say VC here and then VC2 over there. I'm not sure why they say two when they are tied together, but we have a plus and a minus here as well. Um, I'm gonna just shoot for this, the VVL plus, which is our pink wire and see what kind of signal we get. I might be wrong and maybe this is a variable reluctance, a VR sensor and not a Hall effect sensor, but I'm pretty sure it's a Hall effect sensor. So for this, I'm going to reference ground. I'm just gonna clip on to the valve cover somewhere here. There's a ground wire right up there. And then I'm gonna grab a back probe needle and I'm gonna try out some new ones today. I just picked these up off of Amazon. They were like 10 bucks um, and there's quite a few in there. So I figured it wasn't a bad deal to test them out. I'll put a link to these down below. So I'm gonna probe the pink wire. We'll just slide there in between the insulation and the wire until we feel like we contact the terminal inside. And now we need to set up the scope. So I'm expecting a five volt signal. I don't know if it's gonna actually be a five volt signal, but I'm gonna, I'll start there. So over here on the left, it says two volts. I'm gonna drop that down to one volt per division. I think I have 10 divisions on the screen. So that'll give me up to 10 volts. Um, that should be just fine. And actually where my cursors are, where the zero line is right now, I'll be maxing out at seven volts. Let's jump this over to, instead of five milliseconds per division, oops, let's get a little more time on the screen. At least until we verify that we have a waveform. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start up the vehicle and we'll see what we get. So I'm not getting a waveform. That's what it was. I just wasn't back probed in properly. There we go. So now we can see we have a waveform pattern on the screen. Um, I'm gonna drop the time base down just a little bit. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go back up to 100 and I'm gonna hit the hold button at the top. And I'll shut the car off. Now, someone mentioned the other day that with the U-scope, you can change the scaling and stuff afterwards. You can zoom in or manipulate the waveform slightly afterwards by changing your time base and your voltage scaling. Now I'm gonna hit the, the left button up here. It says B. I think that should save the information to the SD card or internal of the unit before I start messing with stuff. Okay, so those are saved. And now I'm going to change my, my time base here. Um, if I go back out too far, you can see that we stopped recording. That was the end of the buffer, but we can zoom in. Um, looking at this waveform, it looks like my integrity of the waveform is pretty good. Now I'm sitting right above zero. I'm actually sitting for one volt per division. I'm at almost one volt here. And then two, three, four, we're about four volts at the peak. So what the reason they do that is if this was actually a zero to five volt square wave, if the sensor was shorted to ground, Toyota wouldn't know if the sensor quit working or if we had a shorted wire. But because they have this floating between, you know, one and four volts, if I get shorted to zero volts, it knows that it's shorted to ground. And if I'm stuck at five volts, then it's stuck to power. Um, so it gives them a little bit additional diagnostic ability. Um, so that is it for this waveform. It, it, this is going to be an easy week, um, but this is going to be a very useful test in the future. Um, we'll be adding additional channels to this as we move on. Um, but at least if you have a one channel scope, you can at least verify the integrity of the waveform. Um, if this vehicle had an intermittent stalling issue, I could just leave this running on here, uh, perhaps with a higher time base. And we could find out if the sensor drops out intermittently um, right before the stall. Okay, quick run through for the snap-on guys. We're gonna go to a scope multimeter. Now it's probably in the component test meter for this vehicle, um, but just so you know how to do things manually, we'll go through this way. Lab scope. Uh, we can do two channel or volts DC since we're only using one channel. We are going to select our probe. It's on volts DC already or test lead volts DC. Uh, we don't need to turn on peak detect or filtering or invert it or couple the AC. Uh, we're just gonna leave all of those blank. I'm gonna drop this down to 10 volts and we can set up a trigger rising or falling. 
Um, so when the waveform goes up or when it drops. Um, right now it's on falling, which is just fine. As soon as our waveform drops on this line, it's gonna try and sync it up. Since there's an uneven number of teeth, it will jump around a little bit either way. Uh, let's go down to our time base. Say 20 milliseconds um, as a starting point, and then we can zoom out from there. If we don't find enough detail, then we may set it to 10 milliseconds. We are recording, let's go ahead and start the vehicle up. Okay, now on the screen, it doesn't look like we have a whole lot going on, but let's go ahead and stop our capture. And go ahead and zoom out. If I know we have a good waveform, then I'll shut the vehicle off. Let's zoom in a ways. Try eight here. Okay, we can see our waveform there. Um, this might give us a fuller picture. So we can see we have a small tooth here and then a big tooth and a medium tooth and a small tooth and a big tooth and a me medium tooth. So we can see a couple rotations of that camshaft. Let me get that out of the way. Um, everything looks like it's working just fine. And I know I didn't th throw the cursors up on the last one, but we can, we can throw a cursor on here and find out what our peak was and what our low was. So of course I'm on a, a little hump there. So we're toggling between 0.8 volts and 4.14 volts. Um, and that's what the computer's toggling between. So not quite zero, not quite five volts, somewhere in between. So that's it, fairly cut and dry. Um, it's not nearly as in depth as the last one, which was the relative compression with a channel sink, but still a very useful test and we're gonna use it a lot more in the future. Um, so get a handle on this one. Um, most signals you're gonna see are around zero to five volts. Every once in a while you'll get a vehicle that has a higher range, but typically they drop it down to that five volt range. Some vehicles are going to have a Hall Effect crank sensor as well. Toyota runs uh, VR on the crank, and a lot of the older ones use VR on the camshaft as well, or even inside the distributor. Um, this is probably one of the first engines that actually had the Hall Effect sensor. And then Subarus, like I said, 2012 and up, I think is when they started using that. Um, they might have it in the older ones, just look for a three wire sensor, and that'll kind of cue you in on if it's a Hall Effect or not. Chrysler uses Hall Effect on almost everything. Um, and look for the three wire sensor, find out which one is the signal wire, grab a capture, post it up in the Facebook group. If you're not a member already, there's a link down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of this series, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.